What's going on, guys, and welcome back. What are the top 10 cards currently in the month of May? We're also going to be talking about the Living Tribunal. He comes out later today. Is he a troll card or is he legit? And finally, what are the decks that can counter the meta? All those high Evo decks, what to play against them? We're going to talk about all that today and more on this episode of the Snapchat. And as always, I am joined by Mr. Alex Kocha. What's going on, man? Hello. Happy Monday. Happy last week of the season. I know it's crazy to think that the season's already almost over. I mean, Cozy, this was one of the most anticipated seasons in Marvel Snap history. The cards that have, that have been coming out have been absolutely ridiculous. The meta is in a really cool spot. We've had over the air updates week in, week out. I mean, Cozy, I think it's fair to say, I legitimately can say that it's a great time to be a Marvel Snap player. Dude, uh, yeah, high Evo definitely living up to the hype. I, I got to say, Alex, one of the worst things as a content creator is to get sick, and I have been hit by the sick plague this week if you guys haven't seen a lot of my videos that's because i have been bed ridden this is actually the first time i've popped out of bed so you might have to excuse me if mr alex will uh kind of carry the torch on this one a bit more and uh it's been fun though because while being sick at least i can play a little bit of extra snap and uh that's kind of been the pro uh to it but uh you know a lot of traveling i had a feeling I had a feeling I would go down eventually, right? How's snapping for you? How's the end of the season going? It's going great. Honestly, I've been having a lot of fun. I think the meta is in a really interesting spot. I've been experimenting with a ton of different decks. I tried this like Orca negative list and I can confirm it's horrible. So don't do that. I don't think I'm going to be making a video about negative Orca anytime. So at least someone's got to try it. Someone's got to try it. And I, I went for it and I can tell you, I fell flat on my face, but that's what I love about this game. I love the idea that you get a chance to sometimes take chances on interesting combinations. I mean, Seriously, we got these meta decks that rise up and people go crazy about, but like they're invented. Someone figured them out at some point, right? Then they kind of catch on to the uh, the zeitgeist in general. But like, I mean, I love taking chances, right? Because I want to figure out the next best thing. Yes, sir. Well, we got some good subjects today. As you guys can see down below, one of the most excited uh, for me is the deck building design versus data. I think data can be misleading sometimes. So pretty pumped about that. What do we talk about on your side of the channel, Alex? Yeah, we'll be talking about that, which I think is a really interesting topic. The idea of like, you know, when you design decks, like, you know, are you focusing too much on data? Are you trying to be creative with design? It's something that Cozy and I have been wanting to talk about for a while. And I think it hits home as content creators too, where we try to deliver like interesting stuff to people. It's going to be a really good conversation there. We're also going to be talking about the best high evolutionary decks in this first week. Give you guys an idea of our impressions of what we think has been working well. And uh, we're also going to be talking about the most <laughs> impactful OTAs from the trial month. I mean... We are now, you know, sunsetting the OTAs weekly and, you know, they're still going to be doing them. There's still kind of like a, a schedule for OTAs, but I mean, it's been a wild month and we're going to talk about the ones that we feel have been the most impactful to the Marvel Snap meta. Well, man, Alex, oftentimes I feel like cards, you know, don't always live up to their potential. We've seen this before with Noel and the excitement behind cards. And then, you know, they kind of come into the game and they're not like as good as we kind of thought, right? Like Ghost, I, I remember being kind of up there on the list as well. It's safe to say high Evo, though, definitely lived up to the potential, to the hype. And it's crazy to even go back and look at how we were talking about this card and now seeing the impact that it has on Snap. Now, we're going to talk about how to counter it. We're going to talk about the best decks for you. But what I thought was great is when me and you were talking about this, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, uh, you know, I, I, there was so much hype around Abomination, which I, I think will be good as time goes on. Luke Cage kind of makes his way out. But last week, we were talking about how Hulk was being slept on as one of the most major changes. Can you believe how it feels like we're actually playing with the incredible Hulk now? This guy's a monster. He's the actual Hulk now. Like, that's that's what's coming into play here. He's coming down as like a 618 at times, 620. He's like smashing the board. Massive power spike. It's like truly what you would hope, what you'd hope the Hulk would be. Like, he's found his identity, and it's crazy that it took an entire calendar year for the Hulk to really come into his own and another card to activate it, but I'm just happy it happened. Like, I'm honestly just happy it happened because this is a card we've been talking about, like, oh, it needs a buff, and you even said, like, what, two months ago, you're like, you know, I'll give him a 613, 614. Is that enough? And now he's like, boom, 620. 622 <laughs> now, yeah, right? And, man, I got to say, the one thing, I knew Haiba would be fun. But the thing that I think that I just uh, underestimated was the wide variety of decks that he was going to work in. I mean, truly the builds we're seeing, he's got kind of like a, a two things going. You kind of have to put the same five cards with him in most of these deck builds, but you can have just high Evo and Hulk, and that's almost enough to justify the bad stat line of high Evo in the deck itself. 
uh, kind of how has been your first kind of testing with him? Uh, have you been playing with him a ton? Uh, talk to me. Yeah, I've been playing with him a lot, and I've uh, really enjoyed my time with the card. And I do think that, like, you're right. There's different archetypes that are kind of coming out. And I've been trying to, like, mishmash different archetypes together, see what I can come up with, like, you know. And I have found that, like, the cards are performing well, and I think they're pretty well balanced. Like, I, I think that Wasp is a surprising good um, value card. Like, it has a zero, basically three right it has the chance to come out on turn six uh, and just really have a high impact uh, i love cyclops now i love the animation oh can we talk about the animations oh, for a second man it the nailed amount of them. effort yeah the amount of effort that went into actually producing this card for the effects and the uh the cyclops doing pew pew type stuff and then like the the uh, the thing throwing the stuff even luke cage deflecting the thing's stuff is so cool it's so like the most minor detail i'm telling you a year from now when all these cards have their own vfx this game is gonna be uh, awesome like like pc version where every card has their own effect it, even just the deflect uh, deflect like you just talked about it was like so surprising uh they nailed it they absolutely nailed it and dude i would say probably the most uh, i would say the most surprising because i thought the hulk was gonna be good is cyclops uh cyclops truly man like you do you know what it is i think people thought you had to skip all of your energy or that like it, it, you, that was going to be more important than it was so many decks don't really use all of that energy and, and what i like about it is that now you can look at your cards in your hand and say well i i can finish this off and i can play pro x on five or should i just play a four cost here and get some extra with cyclops on the side right like it gives you kind of flexibility depending on how the match goes which is great because Snap is already filled with like RNG to begin with. I think that the challenging part of High Evolutionary is exactly what you're talking about. The idea of like when to flow an energy, when not to flow energy. It's kind of awkward playing off of curve intentionally. But even if you do it once, I mean, Cyclops in theory becomes a 3-6, right? And then like if you prof X that lane and it just continues to tick down, provided they don't have a Luke Cage, which hey, everyone has Luke Cage anyway right now. I mean, it is remarkable how much value these cards are getting. But they don't feel like completely oppressive. I, the Hulk feels like maybe it's slightly overtuned, but I feel like everything else has a nice feel to it. Like, I feel like everything's pretty fair. I mean, the Luke Cage counter is obviously pretty heavy handed, but um, I mean, it's been a really fun card to play with. I think the archetypes are a lot of fun. And I think we're just starting to scratch the surface of what they're capable of. And I got to give you credit, Cozy. You called out Shocker being slept on. And I have found Shocker to be pretty good. Like, I was playing a list that had Shocker uh, with uh, someone like, you know, obviously Abomination, Scorpion. But I also had Spider-Woman. And I often had Spider-Woman as a four cost because of Shocker, which felt incredible. The amount of value I was getting from that, allowing me to do a combo play on turn five with Abomination and another one, just because I was able to get the Spider-Woman down on four. So I think you identified Shocker as probably a card that was getting slept on. Yeah, I think people still think Shocker's the, the weak link. And it makes sense that you think that because all these other cards have immediate effect, right? Like all these cards are doing what they're supposed to do. I think the builds that we haven't seen and that we're not going to see for a while... I think there's a shocker build just waiting out there, uh, waiting to uh, to abuse the way that he works to get the negative one out there uh, or how your deck is built to always get some type of purpose from him. Uh, but yeah, I've got to say the same, even getting Hulk to be played on five, right? Like the way that it's lined up and getting these bigger cards, shocker feels really good at the moment. Uh, and he's the one that I'm experimenting with the most. Um, I think Cyclops and Storm, we'll talk about that. Just such a nasty combo. The Abomination build, the Affliction build, it is going to be at its peak in about a month. Like right now, again, yeah, Luke Cage is everywhere. And so people are expecting this. But when you get greedy and you don't put Luke Cage in your deck and you know these are kind of floating around, that's when getting dropped two Abominations, two She-Hulks on turn six is going to be absolutely devastating. I mean, I just did a kind of my top uh, high Evo decks. And the sheer amount of like power drop that these things can do, it it's crazy. It's really cool, and it does feel like its own kind of archetype or blend that we haven't seen. I do agree. And uh, this is going to be one of those things that when the cards kind of become less prevalent, the meta settles down a little bit, and you're able to legitimately catch someone by surprise with a like a Moon Girl and the Double Abomination She-Hulk. Like, that's when it gets powerful. Like, right now, people are expecting those types of plays. People are expecting High Evolutionary to be played very often. But with, like, everything... As the settle as the meta settles and people start to like move away from like just playing the same lists over and over again. And a new card comes up when Living Tribunal comes up. People are gonna be trying the Living Tribunal decks. 
that suddenly when high evolutionary gets a little more room to breathe. Yep, without question. I think that's uh, what I'm excited to talk about on your side with the design versus data. Again, guys, uh, all of Alex's subjects you can check in the description down below when we go talk about those. Um, is when you go by the data, you lose the surprise element. And when you go by design, that's when you bring in your own fresh take. And that's what's really cool. Uh, outside of us, when we make a deck, it goes out there to the public anyway. And so then you, you kind of lose that uh, that that feel. Um, but let's go and let's transition. We're going to talk about counters and a lot of high Evo today, obviously. But let's talk about the top 10 cards. It's been a while. It's been about a month and a half since we've done this. Now, I'll say uh, just right away, guys, this was a tall task. Very hard. I, I think that you could arguably... There's probably 15 to 20 cards that could take any of these slots, right? And, and I think that I would agree for 10 being one on some people's list. Uh, but that's why I love hearing from you guys. So drop down below if you're watching on YouTube, your personal top 10 list, what you liked about my list, Alex's list. And we're going to give you our top 10 plus five honorable mentions. And, and I got to say, this was by far the toughest because I left out tech cards. I left out, you know, uh, cards that I use in almost all of my decks. But I tried to come up with ones that are kind of independently just workhorses, powerful, powerful cards, Alex. And so we're going to start with our honorable mentions. So we're going to put a graphic here on the screen. We'll take our time through the top 10, Alex. But for our honorable mentions, go ahead and list off your five that did not make your top 10, but you think they are just, they're obviously very good cards at the moment. My five were Kitty Pride, Nebula, She-Hulk, Iceman, and Killmonger. Those are the five that I believe require honorable mention. I love that there's the one cost just uh, just flooding the honorable mentions. And, and it's cool to see. You always talk about early game being important. And obviously, uh, them kind of reigning in the top you know, 15 is kind of crazy. Now, for my honorable mentions, I, I listen, I left out a lot of tech cards in mine. I, I probably could have put them in there. This was tough. Uh, but for my honorable mentions, these, just, uh, these could be in the top 10 as well. I've got Hitmonkey, Patriot, Mystique, Jeff, and She-Hulk. Now, Hitmonkey needs a little bit of Sarah love. Patriot is just uh, such a reliable card. Uh, Mystique is still one of the best cards in the game. Uh, just a little bit off with Enchantress lately and some of the other decks out there. Of course, Jeff and all of his versatility. And She-Hulk and the... Uh, just being able to play her on turn four or on turn six with double up decks. There's so much wide variety of use. This is our cards right outside of our top ten and Alex, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off at number 10. And for me, I have one that I think he'll continue to move up. Uh, at the moment, this is where he's going to stand. I've got Iron Lad. Uh, Iron Lad, you know, I think Iron Lad uh, by himself, just the raw value. I think he has potential to be one of the best cards in the game. Uh, and Dex haven't even had the chance to be designed. With all the OTAs, with a new card each week, and things are just kind of wild. Um, but what we have seen is Iron Lad is included uh, amongst almost all the top meta decks at the moment. Uh, I would say the top five decks, about three of them, do have Iron Lad in them. Uh, it's easier to make decks around him than we thought. And even if he is just getting a Korg or Iceman effect, the pure stat line is there. And he's a super fun card. If you do get to copy Doctor Doom, if you copy the Hulk now with High Evo, uh, man... The value is just strong, man. I'm loving I'm loving Iron Lad. I think I'm four splits in five already, so he's definitely a card I played with nonstop. I think that he's one of those cards that, like, I don't want to say we slept on, but I think we slept on the idea of how easy he is to incorporate in existing decks, archetypes. And, like, he comes in, and you're right, even if he hits Korg, I mean, he's a 4-6 with the Korg effect. You don't love it, like, naturally, you know, like, Rock Slide hits two rocks, but Rock Slide's a 4-5 now. So you get more power out of Iron Lad. And um, I love the balancing effect of like your opponent now knowing what you're drawing next. I think that was like a kind of a, something we had not really paid much attention to. There's just a lot around the card to give yourself either two copies or not having to play one of the other cards. It feels really strong and great at the moment. So that's my number 10. What is yours? My number 10 is what a card you actually just mentioned in your in your conversation there about uh, Iron Lad. It's Dr. Doom. I think Dr. Doom has fallen off slightly. I think he's one of those cards that, like, is still good. But, like, there's so many combo-centric stuff. Like, you talked about Hitmonkey. Yeah, Hitmonkey can easily outpower a Dr. Doom play on turn six, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, but Dr. Doom still remains a very consistent, excellent card. 15 power across the board. Um, I mean, it, it's still the the godfather of ramp, really, because with ramp and Odin, uh, you know, you, you, you're applying so much pressure on the board state. But honestly, Dr. Doom at 10, I honestly personally wish he was higher, but I do recognize that right now there's so many vertical combos 
that like sometimes going wide is not necessarily the correct answer but if you got to go wide no one does it better than dr doom yeah i'll be honest i won't say much because i have doom placed uh somewhere else on my list i think he's a really good card i think every deck gets better with doom uh it's so funny i'll see the first iterations of deck like even high evo uh, we'll talk about it on your side, but uh, like these are the best high evo lists. And then lo and behold, a couple days later, there's a new one and Dr. Doom's in it. Like, of course he's in it because he just is that kind of escape out of jail free card. Uh, I still think he's he's colossally one of the, the giants of Marvel Snap. Uh, number nine, Alex, uh, again, arguably could be higher. And man, it comes back to this card can't be countered. Dracula at number nine for me. And I'll tell you why. First of all, high Evo, we have a lot of negative. Those Cyclops is just beaming down negative stats. Dracula does not give an F. The Honey Badger doesn't care about negative stats, right? Like, he can just go reliably. Uh, and Discard is just firmly doing pretty damn well at the moment. Man, I love him. I love Dracula. He has done the same thing since launch. And it just doesn't matter. He had, like, a brief period where he wasn't as good, but still just a, a dominant card. I'm going to be talking about him soon, but I'm talking about him a little higher. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so we have uh, my Dooms higher, your Dracula's higher. At least we have the same cards in the list, so that, that makes some sense. Dude, it feels so weird leaving some cards off. I, I, we can get to that later. It's but so hard. It's it so is. hard. If you asked me to write this list again and just deleted this one, I bet you I'd slightly reorder everything again because sure. it is so hard to pick a top it, It's in a vacuum. It, it, that's the problem. Like, what I try to do is I looked at cards independently. Like, you know, uh, Kitty Pry could have easily made my list, you know, spoiling that, but it's fine. Uh, because I feel like she needs Beast to be a little bit better over the top or maybe sure, whatever. It's so hard to make one final list, but this is more for the conversation basis and to see what our viewers think and what their top 10 lists are as well. What's your number nine? My number nine is Daredevil. Uh, Daredevil oh. because like, I mean, I'm going to be talking about another card coming up that you poo-pooed on before, but I think Daredevil in control right now is unbelievable. I think when you talk about Professor X, now you got Guardians of the Galaxy with like Gamora being a top player. Uh, Jeff, the baby land shark, doing what it does with Professor X. There are so many amazing control elements in Marvel Snap right now, and Daredevil just laughs in the face of all of them. Like it is just, it is the card that enables such confidence on turn five with these control style lists. I mean... How many lists do you have with Dracula in right now? Like, I know you love Control. How many uh, decks do you have Dracula? Not Dracula, sorry, Daredevil in right now. Uh, dare, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> you're speaking to the, you're speaking to me, man. Like, of course, I, I, <laughs> no. again, seeing right now, uh, the meta consists that Control is, I think, the top two decks, one with High Evo and one without High Evo, both have Daredevil uh, or both could use Daredevil in them in their control style list. It, this is like my happiest moment. I, I could not be happier. And finally, people are putting some respect on one of the most busted effects in Snap, seeing what your players oh, yeah, do, do on turn five. I, it's never it has never dropped from S tier. It's never not been a great effect. I, I, I don't understand the confusion of why. It, I, take my two energy. Take my two energy so that I can see what you're doing on turn five never gets old man i love it i didn't put him on mine thank you for including him on yours love daredevil dude yeah the effect is legitimately if not the best uh, effect in the game like can like you imagine in a card game you get to just see your opponents play first and then react to it while also being able to double the stakes with cubes like it is insane what this card does it's insane what it does we're getting so many cards that complement professor x and complement control that's why it continues to rise I like the Daredevil going to number eight. I have Killmonger, and this surprised me. Um, you know, I was kind of looking at all the cards I could be putting on this list. I got to tell you, it's mainly because it was your honorable mentions had how many one costs, right? Because of Sunspot, Nebula, and Kitty, one of those three cards are going to be in decks. Like, they, they are absolutely everywhere, and people depend on those cards now to win them at least one lane. So typically, all you have to do typically, Alex, is to play a powerful lane and then have Killmonger in the deck. And usually it's enough. It's why Surfer's great. It's why, uh, you know, Sarah Control remains strong. Killmonger is so much more than a 3-3. Dude, he could be a 3-0 and still pack the punch that he has, right? Just because of what he brings to the table. Love the card at number eight. Killmonger's insane. And I believe last time we did this, I had him at number 10, and he could have very easily have snuck in at number 10 if there wasn't a couple of new cards that have come out that have really, really tugged on my heartstrings. Uh, but Killmonger continues to be an insane card, and we talk about it all the time. It's not a 3-3 value. This thing comes down. If you hit your own Nova and you take out, like, I laugh. There's people, like, I play against guys. Well, they'll be, they'll be having, like, a, a Nebula sitting in lane, like a Storm location, just running up. And they, they see I have a Nova on the board. 
Like, what do you think is going to happen to that Nova? Like, what yeah. do you think is going to happen? He's wild. And he's even, like, in Thanos list now, too. Like, I love that you, uh, not even with the death, you have him just to clear the space. Like, you're clearing the space and you're getting rid of their Nebula that they've worked so hard on. Like, just, oh, man. Killmonger. Just love the card altogether. Very impressive. And my number eight is going to be High Evolutionary. This is where High Evolutionary comes in here. And I think that, I know, it's it could have been higher, but I do think that uh, High Evolutionary will kind of slowly climb as we start to figure them out a little bit more. It's only been a week. I think that in its current iteration, I think sitting at about number eight is fair. I think the heavy-handed kind of counter capabilities of Luke Cage is what holds it back a bit. But as Luke Cage starts to become less prominent, I do believe that uh, High Evolutionary and its list will kind of find new life and take more people by surprise. But until then, I do think it sits at number eight. But in terms of the actual quality of this release, this is top one. I think this is the best card they've ever released in terms of the sheer quality of the release. I will hold my comments for when I talk about High Evo. He might be a little higher on mine, but I like it. Okay, let's go to number seven, Alex. And at number seven, I've got a card that really was only out of the top 10 when the space stone was at its uh, just a ridiculous state and that's storm if you look at control what we've just talked about uh and what we will talk about with the rising decks storms in all of them i mean to have your deck built around uh being able to shut down a location early and then you have the follow-up cards and you have the ability to choose when to do that it's crazy how good storm is i mean i know dr doom exists i know we have some cards like jeff but the fact of the matter is storm with discard storm with really just about any archetype it's it's enough to win just nebula just cyclops with storm juggernaut silver surfer man i could have put storm higher uh, storm and her effect is so insane and snap and, and how the game plays on a one through six turn basis man I, incredible card i do love storm and this is one of my absolute favorite cards in the game. I remember months ago, I did like the best cards in series two and storm was number one. And I feel like we've talked about storm a lot on this podcast. The thing that kind of gives me reserve about storm is exactly what you just mentioned. Cause you, you nailed it. The idea that like, we do have so many cards that like kind of minimize its impact. Like even to some extent, like sunspot and nebula, they kind of minimize storms impact because they can sit and gain value for your opponent. If you, if you, they played into that location, you do have the doctor dooms, you have the visions. There's so many ways to work around it but but when you have a storm and you have something like a morbius sitting behind it now you know they can't play enchantress there that's like one of the reasons why it's so strong in discard for instance it does have a key role to play and it can be one of the most versatile cards in the game it's mainly because if you have storm in your deck you should have better follow-ups than your opponent that's what i think is so strong like yeah sunspot can do that but you should have a card and a game plan in mind but also there's a lot of decks that can like sure fire win one location like they're gonna win it and so storm allows you to win the other one with like not a lot of commitment and then even just doing like a spider-man professor x then you won two probably i mean it's it is it's crazy uh, we're seeing that with uh with hulk and yeah 22 hulk 20 power hulk gold good luck good luck and then on top of that she can get rid of limbo get rid of some uh like just her ability to get rid of locations as well so she carries that scarlet witch field like you know, maybe you got Shuri Lab uh, a couple times and then you just throw her and then you cut your opponent off from that Shuri's Lab. So there's just so much under one roof, man. Love the card. What do you have at number seven? At number seven, and this is when we start to get into a spot where like, this card could have been higher. This like this is where it starts to get really hard. But for me, seven was Sarah. And, um, and honestly, I look at my list. I'm like, man, Sarah could have been higher, but I think it's a safe seven. The reason for that is because this is a card that I think has so much, so much to give the Marvel Snap meta. Um, it is in a core component in the control list, surfer list, and so many different variations of different decks. And uh, as I talk, I think I should have put it higher, honestly. I think seven might be too low for Sarah. Uh, so, Cozy, if it's not your seven, I think I'm going to agree with you because as I'm talking about it, I'm starting to realize that I think I love so Sarah more than just seven. Sarah is one of the cards I fear the most, and I'll talk about her in just a little bit. Moving on to number six, Alex, I have... Our new OTA affected card in Wave. Crystal. Yeah, oh. exactly. Crystal. Hey, I've seen a couple crystals out there. I, I've seen two more crystals played than I did all of the entire year that we had her in the game. Uh, man, Wave now becoming kind of this disrupt card, uh, but also still maintains her ramp value. I, I, it, it's still taking adjustments, but man, I like that I can depend on the opponent only playing one card for the most part. And, and I've actually seen stuff 
where people are going for turn seven. And then what they do is they play Wave and Psylocke. So they have eight energy and there's still a way to play two cards with Wave on turn seven. Uh, it's a little risky turn seven's limbo depending on that. But I just like what Wave brings, man. The new Disrupt uh, kind of ability with her. Uh, I've seen her played on five more than I thought. More than I thought she would. Uh, but on top of that, just you're going to get the value out of her. And she feels good. She never is in a deck list. And you're like, man, maybe I should take her out. She feels like she always belongs. I think there's something you're missing here, which makes Wave one of your favorite cards. And this 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 change to Wave was low-key a buff to your waifu arrow. Like, this mm -hmm. makes Arrow much more playable again. And this is exactly... I know that's what you really wanted. You wanted an Arrow buff, and you got it through this Wave buff. And, I mean, I think you're right. And, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll reveal right now that, like, Wave's a little higher on my list. Ever so slightly higher. Because I do think this card is insane. I think it really solidifies itself as a legitimate tech card. A card that, like, you put in your deck, and you know what you're doing on turn 5. And, like... I kind of like the change. At first, it was one of those changes. I'm like, man, you kind of like, you know, you take out the Death Wave style list. Obviously, it really negatively impacts She-Hulk to some extent, although She-Hulk's back in a different capacity. But it's funny that like Wave, this change really solidifies it as a tech card that's capable of legitimately shutting down those Sarah based lists that we just talked about. Like it's actually the Wave change that I think takes Sarah a step back because Sarah can't deal with this Wave effect, right? Whereas before, it kind of still used to. My number six is on the screen, and it's Darkhawk. I think that the changes they made to Rockslide takes a little bit off of Darkhawk, and I think the sheer number of counters that have been made available for Darkhawk, including the initial buff to Enchantress and the popularity of Rogue now that Luke Cage is everywhere, does take uh, Darkhawk down a bit. But still, I think this is an insane card, and I think that Second Dinner agrees because they did not drop it down in series. But this is a card that I think provides a lot of value, and if it's in something like a... I don't know, a location that might not be able to get much access to, then it's one of those cards that just runs up. It runs up, provides a ton of value, and uh, honestly, unchecked is a game winner completely. I'm convinced that, like, the number two in second dinner created Darkhawk, and it, like, refused it. Like, there's so many cards catching strays outside of Darkhawk. Like, even with Stature and Black Bolt, their recent adjustment, like, I, I think that's more of Darkhawk in that deck than anything else. Uh, we talk about the best purchase you could have made of all time. It's like when people talk about buying Windows stock back in the 90s is buying Darkhawk in December. I mean, the value you had from him from now to uh, we're in June almost. And the card is still dominant in Snap. Uh, I'm curious to see your top five because I've got a lot of the cards you've mentioned up there. As To me, they're just clear-cut winners. Uh, yeah, I'll talk more about Darkhawk here in a moment. But yeah, dude, wonderful, wonderful card incredible value iron lad like oh it all makes sense together uh at number five alex i've got where you had a little bit lower on the list high evolution a and i think again like you said he could go even higher this four four is complete garbage we all know that high evolution is horrible um and y you're never going to be looking to play him uh but this is going to include the package that you get with him it's kind of like patriot right uh who, who is right out of the list as well the fact that you get sheer value out of a bunch of trash cards. The fact that there's not one card in here that is not a good card. Even Misty Knight is finding some awesome value. I don't know about you, but when you've been playing, if you have like a uh, someone stormed off a lane and you have a Misty Knight and she just like throws over that one buff over to that card, gets you just the narrow victory. I mean, there's not a bad card in this list. It opens up huge archetypes and then the Hulk in himself. I mean, you're getting like this new six cost. That's a top three card. And like, I wanted to put the Hulk on this list, but I couldn't. So I put high evolutionary instead, right? Uh, number five, high Evo could have been higher. Every single meta deck at the moment. I mean, if you go look at untapped, it's insane. The amount on his, just his stats alone. What high ev evolution is bringing to the game. At five, I had wave. This is where I had wave come in because I do think that it's capabilities as a tech card is remarkable. And, uh, you know, as for the reasons we talked about prior, I do think that Wave remains a remarkably good card, which is great to see because when that initial change happened, I think some people were thinking that maybe Wave was dead. Well, those some of those decks were dead. But now, Wave as a tech card that can legitimately shut down specific archetypes while giving other cards new life is here. Yep, absolutely. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing some common same cards as we kind of round out the top 10. At number four, I had who you had, I believe, uh, a lot lower than this. And I couldn't imagine putting him lower, and that's Dr. Doom. Uh, man, Dr. Doom, Dr. Doom. Again, makes every list better. I think we just kind of talked about it. The five across the board feels like a Captain... Like, it's so funny. Captain Marvel, I know is only a five cost, 
and you like hope that six power goes somewhere dr doom's like all right let me just cover the board with all fives and and, and maybe it'll help and it's not even again it's not only the power a lot of these cards it's not just the power like swarm is a great example it's everything you get to do with the multiple cards and the interactions they have with locations now we're seeing you know locations that can't be played in get deleted from the game and that's hurting doom you know maybe a little bit more uh but getting like you know the plus five location to, to one of doom's bots getting washington dc like i feel like there's so many locations that a doom it, it, more so than not uh and or you know lockjaw and a lot of these decks that he's just working in dr doom is a clear cut number four on my list I agree. I do think he's one of those cards that literally can go in any single deck. Uh, I still think that like when people were talking about like, oh, what card do I unlock with my Series 3 tokens? This was obviously before they made their changes. Like Doctor Doom was the one that was like, hey, you never go wrong unlocking Doctor Doom. This has been a card that has not been nerfed, has not really been changed. It has been consistently the same effect, and it's consistently been amazing. So I do agree with your assessment, Cozy. I just... I, listen, I let my heart get in the way of a couple of these cards up top here, okay? So just uh, don't don't hate on me too hard, but I do love Dr. Doom. What you got for me at number four? Number four is where I put Dracula. Um, I love for everything you said. He just doesn't care about the negative stats. Outside of Magneto, he really doesn't have any counters. Um, he activates the discard, which I is one of my absolute favorite decks in the game right now. Like, I cannot get enough of playing discard. I, I love Dracula. I love everything that he does. And um, I love the confidence that I have when he's in a lane that my opponent is just staring at the track and be like, it's, it's going to be a 20. Like, it's hitting whatever he wants to hit. It's never hitting Swarm. It's hitting exactly what that guy wants to hit because that's what Dracula does. Um, I, with Modoc, it's an incredible card. I think Modoc made Dracula way better, right? And it's the only deck where you actually get to play Chavez which is nice because that's my waifu. So, I mean, I do love Dracula for all the reasons you mentioned prior and more. It's even the one decision you get to make on discard where it's play a pock and get the uh chavez or play chavez and get the apoc is enough to make him I insanely strong and it's so funny you could go back I i'm going to try to find the graphic if i do i'll put it on the screen here of my tier or pool three tier list back in i want to say it was end of october or beginning of november very beginning of snap right very launch and guess what was in the s tier and they haven't moved i uh, dracula daredevil sarah Doctor Doom. These were all S tier cards back then, and if they did not get adjusted, then they're still in the S tier, and they haven't. They just have not been there. Arrow was in there. Obviously, she's now uh, rest in peace. A little bit below that list. Definitely not even making either of our top 15s. Still very good card. Even a little bit better now that she's a surprise card. But yeah, Dracula man, uh, he's been the same. And, and yes, Magneto counters him. I feel like Professor X should have some interaction with him at times, where like you could shut it down. Uh, but nope, he doesn't, he doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He gets his power either way. Uh, great pick, Alex, for sure. At number three. Now, this is where, uh, you know, I was, a. Uh, I think you said it yourself. She could have gone a lot higher in your eyes. And that's going to be Sarah. There's not really a card that I fear more than Sarah. You know, I could have like all these, I don't know about you guys listening, but I could have like my board feeling really good. I'm like, all right, I got my, 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 you know, Morbius up. I've got my calling wing. I've got all this discard stuff going on. And then they drop Sarah on five. I'm like, what are they about to do? How much power are they about to drop on me? Like, what combos do they have? What do they have in their arsenal? I think this is why Hitmonkey uh, isn't exactly top 10 by himself, but he's involved in that because of Sarah and the colossal amount of power that that card people forgot, even though it was last month's season pass. Uh, Sarah will and is going to be a dominant force in Snap for probably ever. I, I don't think she'll ever be out of my top five unless there's some serious changes made to her. Love Sarah. The effect is just remarkably powerful. It's insanely powerful. And uh, as I discussed prior, when I was discussing at my number seven, which I'm kind of, you know, as I, I was saying, like, I kind of regret having her at seven. She should be higher. I agree. I think that ultimately I'd probably switch my wave. If I could do it again, I'd switch my wave and uh, Sarah. So my Sarah would probably at five, my wave at seven. Um, but I mean, hey, that's in the past now. Got to live with my decisions. And uh, I do agree. Like Sarah's incredible. And what's incredible about Sarah is how she activates all these different archetypes. And I mean, control has been for the last month or so, like the go-to for ranking, in my opinion, like one of the most consistent ones. You always have an answer and Sarah's at the heart of it. At number three, I have a card that I know is a little controversial and it was my prior number one and that's Shang-Chi. I think Shang-Chi comes in at number three. I think that this card is so impactful to Marvel Snap. 
I think that at any time you're like, hey, I'm running up a massive board or I'm running up a massive lane. Look at this. Look at this 17 power double dinosaur. And then Shang-Chi just uppercuts the double dinosaur into oblivion. Um, it's it's one of those cards that I think will never go away. It's a card that needs to exist. Like I was in a tournament where like we got to ban cards and I banned Shang-Chi and I was like, like I, 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 people on Discord were like, dude, why? Why would you do that? Like, do you realize what you've done? I'm like, that's how important Shang-Chi is to this game. It has a very important effect. And I do think in the top three is where it belongs. Yeah, Shang-Chi is like my lazy. I didn't include it in the top 10. It's an obvious one of the best cards in the game. Uh, it, it obviously deserves to be in this top 10 list. I almost just like wanted to talk about other cards. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is the, the Hulk with how dominant he is at the moment. Like, there it is. Hope you don't have priority play where you think you're going to have the Hulk. Shung Chi's just power flip is so, so vital. Um, uh, you know, Glenn has said this multiple times. Never feeling safe, even though you have giant power on the board, I think is is crucial. Uh, and I think if you look at the data right now, he is the number one, I believe, played card in the moment at snap. Uh, in Or at least included in decks uh, for good reason, because there's just massive power in decks right now. Uh, we're getting even more so, obviously. And, you know, uh, it, what it does, I like what how it essentially keeps cheating out cards that are big power early uh unsafe right so like if you get your a bombs out if you get abomination because of all this new kind of high evo stuff cool but shang chi still exists and you have a way to have a counter deck build uh and that's why sarah and enchantress and shang chi these counter decks are, are going to be viable uh and kind of always remain that so yes obviously i think he could be the number one card for both of us and no one would bat an eye and I think that there's been a, an important change as well. You've have two cards that have been changed or buffed in the recent couple patches. Uh, you have Invisible Woman that got buffed, which obviously Shang-Chi works very well with to flip that initiative to his advantage. And then you have Ghost dropping in series, which obviously activates in benefit of Shang-Chi. So you have these additional tools that I think really helps Shang-Chi because obviously you want to give that initiative for that final uh, turn under most circumstances if you're going to play him on turn six. But yeah, this is a card that honestly will always be a huge meta impacting card in Marvel Snap. And number two, Alex, this is where I have the Dark Hawk. Yeah, man, Dark Hawk, uh, just the value town. Value USA. Now we're seeing only needs maybe just Rock Slide and he's still going to get what he needs out of the deck. There's locations that aid him. A lot of things that play to his advantage. Not a lot of locations that go against him. He's going to pair with uh, one of the best cards in the game that we've yet to talk about. Uh, Dark Hawk and the value he brings, I think it's pretty clear and obvious that you can build decks around him and have yourself a pretty successful deck. Uh, and I like it, man. And, and we've talked about him enough. I'm not going to talk about him too much more. But the fact that the way you make him stronger is by disrupting your opponent is, is something so crazy. That is why. Uh, and he's only four cost and you can play multiple four costs. It, he's crazy. It's really telling that there's so often times where I'm on like Marvel Snap social media, whether it be Twitter or Reddit, or even in our comment section where people are like, hey, you know, I'm struggling. I want to rank up in Marvel Snap. People are like, hey, play Cozy's Rocks and Hawks list. Like that has been consistent for like four months, right? That's how good Dark Hawk is. Like Dark Hawk really is a great card. And you're right. There's been a lot of straight bullets hitting a lot of the core pieces of Dark Hawk, but like he's a four zero. If you make him a four negative one or whatever, like that, that, that can be tricky too. Like the negative stuff can almost become buffs in some circumstances. So it's like, I think four negative, four zero is fine. And I think they're trying to address the pieces, but also let's not forget, there are a ton of counters, right? It's Shang-Chi, it's Enchantress. Like there's, there's multiple ways to turn off this card, but still your whole deck's been disrupted. And instead of drawing Enchantress, you're drawing these damn rocks. He feels like just Devil Dinosaur, like, you know, in the sense of, like, just a good card that you can buff up pretty easily. Yes, there's counters, but, like, Devil Dinosaur has been around forever. Who could have been on these lists, too, guys? And, and, and it, it's just Value Town. Value Town USA, the mayor of Value Town. Uh, what do you've got for your number two? All right, so number two, this is going to be a hot take. This is like, okay, it's Alex's list. That's why he picked this card. And I, listen, listen in the comments. Feel free to disagree. This is where my heart spoke maybe too high, too highly of this card, but it's it's Jeff the Baby Land Shark. This is the card that I've included in every single list whenever possible. Cozy, this card is ridiculous. I don't care what anyone says. I've been talking about this card since release. People ask me if it's worth 6K. I say yes. Should I be buying High Evolutionary? Yes, but this card's insane. This card is one of my favorite cards in the game. It does so much. It's It goes wherever you need it to. It is getting nerfed because they keep removing damn locations from the game that benefit it. But, like, control, 
it benefits your prof X. If they're playing control, you get to kind of, you know, get into their storm location. You're able to get into their prof X location. <sighs> Jeff the Shark just does everything I want it to. It's a very reliable 2-3 that can even be played late in the game as a surprise factor. Yeah, I love Jeff. Jeff's a really good card. Had him on my honorable mentions. Um, you know, I think what's cool about him is, is that he's really good in the current meta. But if you look ahead, he's still going to be good. Next season's move season, he can move. So he's going to help kind of those decks out a little bit. Uh, but then also, if you look into July, July is a control month again. Another control month, which what works with control? Jeff the Shark. And so uh, having this, this card that can... Uh, go against all these other things that they're trying to force you to do. We talked about it. The two best decks at the moment both have control elements. Jeff plays well against those decks. Love Jeff. And I, and I don't fault you for having him on the list. Uh, no question. I'm going to take a guess. We don't know each other's list. I'm going to take a guess. We both have the same number one because we didn't mention him. You didn't say it in your honorable mentions. Maybe you just forgot him. Uh, and, and maybe I don't know. But on the count of three, I want us both to say our number one. And I, and I have a feeling it's the same. And I think people might be uh, surprised. You ready? All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Zabu. Zabu. Is it Zabu? You have Zabu at your number one, too. Okay. I, you know, I thought maybe like you forgot to, to include him in your. It's in like your we list. did not talk about Zabu at all this <laughs> entire time. And it's like, it's like, are they, they forgetting about legit the best card in the game right now? Yeah. You know, like I was looking at Sarah and him. I was looking at a lot of cards. Um, uh, Zabu, I have more boosters than any other card. I think I was, I was hanging out with uh, Dexter last week. And he found out how many splits and boosters I had a, a Zabu. And he's like, D do you only play with this card? I'm like, yeah, probably. Like, I put Zabu in most of my deck builds, the core deck builds. Having the what the four cost cards can do, whether it's a tech card or like a, you know, big power card or the thing or Dracula. And being able to play it for three cost, no matter if it's on turn three or turn six. But Alex, even better, he got a buff because like uh, Cyclops and Misty Knight and the Hulk where you want to have that leftover energy, that little leftover energy each turn, Zabu allows you to do that. Talk about such a perfect nerf to a to a card. Um, and yeah, do I feel like he's overpowered? I, I don't. I don't feel like he's overpowered. I feel like they need to like kind of focus on the four cost cards uh, because I don't know what else you'd be able to do for Zabu to make him any worse, maybe. Uh, man, uh, why do you have him at your number one? For all the reasons you said. Like, he activates all these other cards. Uh, obviously, any sort of uh, energy discount style card is going to be extremely powerful. It's not It's not a secret why Sarah is so good. It's because the same reason why Zabu is so good. Zabu comes out earlier. Zabu impacts some of the most effective cards in the game. I mean, Rock Slide had to get nerfed because of the interaction between, you know, Darkhawk, Zabu, and etc. I mean, it's just an amazing card that continues to just put value on the board, but not from itself. It's the combination play. And being able to play two four-cost cards, which are often extremely impactful on turn six, cannot be understated as well. And even if you have Iron Lad, if you're like, huh, I haven't drawn my Doctor Doom yet. Like, what do you got to lose to throw down Iron Lad on turn six in conjunction with whatever else you're playing, right? It's crazy what this card does. Exactly. It's the, the there's more, and there's always going to be four cost cards coming out. And if they're anything like Iron Lad, then we're looking pretty good for Zabu to get some good value. The thing just got a nice little buff. Uh, there's just continual great value to play those cards earlier or play two of them on turn six. So, Alex, here it is again. This is going to be my top 10. Here is your top 10 on the graphic with the honorable mentions. Again, guys, let us hear down below yours. And uh, I don't think we're going to see a lot of change in the coming months. But move month in June may definitely uh, swap some things up. Maybe Heimdall makes a list because of all the uh, the what he brings to the table on the final turn. Uh, that's the good thing about Snap, right? Like, there's always something new with locations and new cards coming around the corner. Uh, now, we're going to go and talk about the decks right now that are countering the meta at the moment. And the meta is control, and the meta is high evo. Uh, it, it's pretty obvious if you look at the data uh, that high evo is swarming everywhere. And Alex, I know you've done a lot of testing. Uh, I myself have. It's this kind of weird juggle as a content creator you have to do of like getting uh, high evo decks out there and then swapping your mind and getting counters for high evo decks out there, right? Uh, so I've got a lot under my belt, but go ahead and talk to me about some decks that you like, and we'll throw them on the screen uh, that you think do really well against the current Marvel Snap meta. 
All right, so one of my absolute favorite that I've been playing recently, uh, Cozy, has been Anti Evo Silver Surfer. I did feature it on one of my uh, you know recent videos where I talked about countering uh, High Evolutionary, and uh, on this list, which you can see on the screen here, um, it has all the cards that like you're looking to counter High Evolutionary. Now, in this particular list, I will say that I intentionally tried to stay away from playing Luke Cage. The reason for this is because with Luke Cage, it is a definite catch-all. And if you want to get rid of someone like Maria Hill, for instance, you definitely can. You can add Luke Cage in here. But I was trying to stay away from Luke Cage and utilizing Rogue as the primary counter. In this list, you have Goose, which I believe shuts down the Hulk, which is incredibly powerful. But you have to be wary of the effect of Abomination sneaking into a location if they get enough of a discount. I love the Maria Hill, by the way. Maria Hill gives you that additional one-cost card, which can be played in conjunction on turn or, although, you know, it might get destroyed with your Nova and Killmonger if that so happens. So Maria Hill with Killmonger and Nova does require a little bit of nuance. But ultimately, this is a deck that I think does a lot in the current meta. You do have your Cosmo, you have your Polaris and Maximus, and of course, that's Sarah. It kind of has an answer to everything cozy, and it's one of the reasons why I think it's a good turn to, if you're looking to counter High Evolutionary, uh, I just, with the inclusion of Rogue, I felt like I could get a little fancier. One thing I think that works for Silver Surfer so well is that people just like forget that there's a lot of three costs on the board and or with yours there's kind of not just three costs so they they forget as well brood might be the only like pure obvious like this is going to be surfer but then just playing killmonger and it, it, like we just talked about on our top 10 followed by surfer is such a swing on turn six it's incredible uh and, and the tech cards we've talked about this on the snapchat plenty of times and, and people uh, are, are seeing it i mean silver surfer he does wonders. Uh, I definitely like the list there. Uh, for mine, you know, I think we've talked about control. The Patriot list, and we we briefly talked about this. This is probably one of those that if you want a deck that doesn't really have a strong answer against it, it is the, the Lad Patriot out there. Iron Lad copying uh, Brood or Iron Lad copying Mr. Sinister is such a cool card. But on top of that, even if you pull a dud, and you get a no ability card then iron lad is essentially which <laughs> this is so crazy he's the thing he's a four six he can get powered up right so he's a four six that gets powered up by the patriot if he pulls patriot it's great if he pulls ultron it's fine dr doom so you get the high roll but then also the low roll is completely safe uh, and you can play that uh feeling really solid onslaught continues to be probably my top five like copy card from iron lad not having to play Onslaught and having them on the board feels really good as well. Uh, and this deck right here that, that you guys can see includes Wasp, Luke Cage, Mr. Sinister, Patriot Brew, Debris, Wave, Iron Lad, Iron Man, Blue Marvel, Doctor Doom, and Onslaught. Pretty much every card you see here is going to have the value from Iron Lad and or it's just your good old Patriot deck, right? And now people are seeing these no ability cards and they're expecting high evo. Uh, obviously, the animations are, pr are pretty blunt. Uh, but yeah, man, loving Iron Patriot as, as one of the better ones. Uh, and if you don't have Iron Lad, still, I would venture to say the good old solid reliable Patriot deck is probably still one of my favorite decks to do well against the current meta. One of the ones that I've been turning to is uh, Anti-Evo Kitty Control. Uh, the idea of using Kitty Pride in a Sarah shell. Uh, ironically, I do think that Kitty works well with Killmonger. So you're going to see the graphic here on your screen. And essentially, the way it works here is you do have the inclusion of Luke Cage. You have those core components of, you know, your Bishop, Angela, Mysterio combination. So this is naturally a Hitmonkey style list if you want it to be. Uh, Hitmonkey came out for the addition of Luke Cage. But if you want to have... If you want to have Luke Cage, uh, sorry, Hitmonkey in there, you know, you could even consider moving the Sentinel out. But, you know, I'll leave that up to you. But this is the list that I've been running here. I think that it does a lot in the current meta. I do think that Kitty Pride in conjunction with Killmonger is completely fine because the way that the cards actually play with each other, I think that you can play them in tandem with one another with confidence because Kitty Pride's coming back to your hand. It's never, it's never going to get negatively impacted by your Killmonger, provided you're not completely inebriated and you're playing them in the wrong order. I do think that this deck has a lot of answers to the current meta. And of course, I mean, just <laughs> if you really just want to just add Luke Cage to any deck, you kind of just can, and that helps to a certain degree. Yeah, it, I would say the, the deck that I probably lose to the most, if I was going like, to self-evaluate, would be Kitty Pride decks with Hitmonkey. Uh, what they can pump out is crazy. It's not the Sherry one. That one's really good. But like, it's I know what I, I, I watch it go back, and I'm like, all right, so it's going to be this much power. Here comes the Taskmaster. The Kitty Pride with the Hitmonkey dump, and you don't really know what's going to come out. Do they have Mysterio? Which lanes are they going to push all that power onto? That's where I feel like Kitty Pride, like you can 
there's a lot of lists that she belongs in well and uh whether it's the one you just talked about or just a big old bounce list with kitty pride super strong like and everybody has this card if you have beast you have kitty pride and you, you happen to have hit monkey as well uh you got yourself a really solid deck against the meta and, and it's funny because like there's like no good way to get rid of kitty right you can't really like affect her that much uh because she's bouncing back to that hand always you can't destroy your priorities a mess uh, I can't tell you how long it's taken me to get used to the priority jump that happens when I'm playing against a Kitty Pride. So much so that I've played like just the wrong play thinking I don't have priority. It's it's such a wonky card to go up against. And uh, I love that it feels like that solid option. Uh, definitely a good pick there. We won't go into discard all that much. We've talked about it enough. But I do want to just say with all the negative affliction going on, this card just doesn't care. What we talked about with Dracula, it doesn't care. The swarms that you can do. I have a whole guide on discard. Still think that this is the season to play it. It's not too late. Plenty of people, some of the most I've seen yet, have said this is what took them to infinite. If you take the time to study it. So this is the discard list easily. And if you want to know more, I do have a video going over that. And then finally, Alex, for me, outside of like Sarah Control that I think can always be in the list. Uh, Electro Ramp with, with Sandman is great and all. Um, but I do think because of the hooks going around, people forget leader, man. If you're able to not use all the energy, which if you're playing Electro Ramp, you typically aren't using all that core energy. Depends on the deck list you're playing. So you're still going to build up your own Hulk and get that ongoing power because you still need to skip turns to, to match the power they're outputting here. Uh, but leader gives you a two point cushion, which is enough for one ish turn, which is typically like maybe the Electro turn. I love leader and I'm loving them in these rude ramp, these kind of uh, electro ramp decks that don't have to have Sandman. They certainly can, uh, but with Jubilee, with Iron Lad, we're starting to see a lot more dependable uh, ramp list and or Sandman ramp list. Uh, wh what are your thoughts here? I think leader is kind of having a bit of a resurgence for the exact reason why you said it does give you that two point cushion, but most importantly, when that Hulk comes down, like very few people are accounting for leader as a play. And when they are skipping kind of energy, there's a chance that they're actually giving up some board state. Now, uh, I think you were right to identify prior when we talked about high evolutionary, that Cyclops and Storm, for instance, in combination can kind of rectify that a bit because you are not, you're not just giving up energy, like you're getting value for that giving up energy. But uh, no one expects leader right now. And it does definitely catch people. By it's caught me by surprise, Cozy. So I think you're onto something. Well, finally, Alex, we go to our last subject here. And again, guys, thank you for uh, minding me as I, uh, maybe I'm coming off a bit sick. Alex doesn't think I even sound sick, which I, I, I appreciate it. I'm I've great, been... buddy. You sound great. You look great. Look at you. You look like an absolute chad. Oh, man. The hair's hiding, though. You're hiding your hair behind the uh, behind the hat, though. I think that's a little unfortunate. But other than that, buddy, you, you look like an absolute chad. I've not gotten out of bed in three days. So this is uh, feels good to kind of bounce back here. Uh, but let's talk about Living Tribunal, who this is uh, coming out today. And Living Tribunal is, wow, an interesting card. Is it a troll card? Is it good? Should you buy it? Here's the thing. I don't think a lot of people are going to have this card, which is going to make it good because people don't have it and everyone used their tokens. I mean, clearly the piggy banks were saved for a high evolution, man. Like the, the, the amount, I was super impressed by how many people got high evolution. And I can just tell by views on my own videos compared to other new cards that come out. It was high evolution season. And Living Tribunal is our last new card in May. Really strong months of new cards. I think Living Tribunal is going to be interesting. I think it's going to be not super strong. But he's going to carry the same weight that Galactus did in the first month or two of his release. That no one's going to expect the, the splitting of power that Living Tribunal brings. I will say tall board play is, is becoming a little bit better. Even with, I think we were talking about it a couple weeks ago. Like what cards would you play there? The Hulk alone now can bring so much if you're able to get him out a little early. What the Hulk, because he's ongoing, especially if you can wave him out and you let him build up by himself. We need more cards that can build up. Um, I think it, you could start making them work maybe in some storm decks where you do close off a location. Uh, even like Gambit and getting rid of their cards. You need to somehow interrupt what they're doing, whether it's like a super control build or if it's going to be just pure power. You know, I think it's going to take some time for people to be aware of what uh, Living Tribunal might bring to the table, right? Uh, Invisible Woman getting that buff. Coincidence? Maybe, but I think those ongoing cards. Dark Dimension's the hot location. Everybody's playing Hella. Have at it. I'll play an Onslaught Iron Man and um, and uh, Omega Red deck, right? Like those uh, ongoing that Cosmo, if anything, just helps on the other side. 
uh, is what I think is going to be the strongest with him. But what I want to talk about real quick, Alex, is with Living Tribunal, how he works, right? So there's some kind of uh, speculation and or confusion. So because it's splitting it into three equal power uh, ac across all the lanes, right? If you have, let's say, 20 or let's 30 is easier. If you have 31 power, you're going to have 10 on each location. It's going to round down. So one rounds down, two rounds up. So if you have 32 power, then you're going to have 11 on each location. So that's important to keep in mind. It's going to be two is up, one is down, and that's going to play a, a, a kind of a, a, a big importance, Alex. My initial impressions are that like I don't I don't have a deck ready. I don't I don't have a That's deck fine. ready, but what I will tell you is that like I think Cosmo is gonna be the card because remember it splits your power across all three. So people are often saying, Oh, I'm gonna go super vertical in one lane. Well it's like, well, Shang Chi says hi, and so does Enchanters if you're running double dinosaurs and stuff. I do think that Cosmo in the locations that you're trying to protect your your big cards are is gonna be invaluable, completely invaluable. And I think it's worth noting, though, that, like, it just splits the power. It does not need to be a single location, right? So throwing all your eggs in one basket might not necessarily be the best idea, but it can be a way to approach the location or, or the game plan, especially if it's behind Cosmo. I think it can be done. Now, where I think that's going to happen is either with a uh, ramp. I think ramp is going to, you know, Black Panther, Odin, all those ongoing cars, the Hulk, we need to cheat those out early. And so naturally... I do think that that is going to be one of the bigger tickets. Um, and this isn't just talking about all the counters that he's going to have because there, there's several. So, But I do think ramp will be there. But you know what's another one that I think people are sleeping on? What is a, a deck that can pump out a lot of power that doesn't need to cheat anything that eh, can rely on some luck and RNG? But that's going to be the destroy deck. Destroy decks have this phenomenal way of putting a lot of power uh, not only on one lane, but typically across multiple lanes. But if you only need to focus on that one lane and you can Bucky Barn, Carnage, Venom, then you have your free death. Oh, wait, we're forgetting about a card that might have an insane pairing with Living Tribunal, and that's Deadpool. If you can have these cards that have insane power and you can build them up, I think it might be destroyed because you have death. You have all the play with Venom. Yes, you are so subject to Shang-Chi and these other cards, but I actually think this is the one I'm going to turn to first. I was going to say that Destroy is the one that I think sneaks the most power out uh, without people expecting it, right? Um, I think most people are going to lean towards like the Devil Dinosaur style builds, protect Devil Dinosaur, you know, get a Mystique on board, you just go really, really tall on, uh, on you know, one or two locations. But I again, I say it all the time, but you're right to identify that Destroy can seriously put up a lot of surprise value on the board. Um, and even like, you know, something like Arnim Nola. Can you sneak out Arnim Nola somehow with like a, a wave play to get the, that that power split across the board with Living Tribunal? Yeah, it's going to, that's where like the, I think the Electra Ramp is going to work. I I think just like having them in some decks that work already is what's going to be great. Like you can look at your options and say, wow, my opponent is not going to be able to beat my power spread out. Or, okay, I've done this. I built, I did a bunch of destroy on this lane. The, the triple is not going to beat it. So let me just put Noel in the other one or whatever. It, 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 yeah, it is what could work with him. Now, this does, uh, guys, Hobgoblin is going to be so bad for this card. Uh, Jane Jaw that just has like naturally good power across a lot of lanes. A Captain Marvel that can move to a lane is going to be really good against this card. And then, oh yeah, Galactus, right? So the card's going to struggle, but I do think it's going to have a nice surprise factor it's going to be a fun card. I, I don't know if he'll ever be like this core meta card, but he will be a decent surprise option uh, that I actually think will make some tournament play because of that. Uh, because of like, in fact, like I think it's going to be decent in Conquest because it can tackle a wide variety of decks just with him being in the deck to begin with. Does it bring Shuri back? Like if you think about it, yeah. like you can Shuri Red Skull into, uh, into Living Tribunal, the extra power you're giving on the other side, who cares? Because it's getting spread so much. Like, I wonder what the natural synergy with Shuri is. It, it might be pretty natural. I like the idea of doing, like, Shuri Vision, because then you can decide whether you need to do Living Tribunal, and if you don't, you can nope out of the lane that you shuri in, right? So, like, it's it's like the flexibility there that I think it, it is kind of important. Uh, obviously, you know, if you play Living, it's going to split no matter what. Uh, but there's probably more archetypes than we think that are going to work with this, uh, and, and control is what I was leaning on as well. So... We're going to have to see it comes out later today. That's going to be exciting. And guys, what an episode of the Snapchat. We talked about the top 10 cards. 
the best decks to counter the current meta, and Living Tribunal. Now we're heading over to Alex's side to talk about the best high Evo decks, deck building design versus data, and the most impactful OTAs from the trial month. Alex, as always, it was a beautiful time talking to you. We have an exciting one next week as we head into the new season. And guys, appreciate you guys for all the kind reviews, the comments. Let's see your top 10 down below. And until the next one, happy snapping.